Hello there. Today we're going to be talking about how to create this effect where your character is going to be respawned or um, it's going to die. This one that just comes right out of the, um, the body of your character. This one here is just a Niagara effect that looks kind of cool. Okay. So let's get started. In your, um, in your particles folder, if you don't have any, make sure uh, right click new folder and uh, create a particles effect folder for yourself because that way it's going to be much more organized and um, easy to find. Right click Niagara system. Uh, maybe you can go ahead and find a probably a fountain and add it to your system and hit finish and then call it something. I've already created mine as always called NS char underline character respawn. Um, and the whole logic is pretty simple. You have some particles that are um, looped once. So we won't have any kind of an infinite behavior. So if I have, to, uh, I, I have one infinite behavior, I'll have, uh, let me show you something like this, which I mean, in some cases would look cool, but not in my case anyway. So what I need in the emitter state, if you don't have any, just type in state emitter state in the um, emitter update. Make sure it's um, looped once and the loop duration mode is fixed. Also go into the properties and make sure it's uh, sim target is going to be GPU target sim. Um, and if you're spawning this Niagara particle on your character, you won't have any bound problems. But if you are going to be looking at it from a further distance or in some weird um, angles, then you have to make sure that the bound is a little bit um, bigger than this one. And that's going to be, um, you can't really use dynamic, it's going to be expensive, but Make sure these are a little bit bigger than what they are right now. Then come in here, spawn, burst. We will have a burst. Uh, in my case, I'm spawning 40,000 particles. Uh, come in here into the initialized particle. Uh, lifetime min is one, lifetime max is three. Color minimum and maximum are like color minimum is a default value. Color maximum is just one zero one one because I just want it this way. You can go ahead and create something else. By the way, I haven't created any material for it. So maybe you can just go ahead and create a material which uh, will make it a little bit more complicated. I'm just using the default sprite material. Um, and the sprite size is going to be a random uniform. I'm not going to do it non-uniformly. I'm just going to be using a uniform value of uh, from 0.5 to 1. This is the catch here. If you want to um, spawn uh, particles on your mesh, you need skeletal mesh location. Just type in skeletal mesh location and you'll have this node right here. The preview mesh is going to be your character's mesh. So click on your uh, mesh, find it in your content browser, come in here and select it in here. I'm going to deactivate this one because I don't really need it. Um, and then make sure you have your mesh added here. Then open up your mesh, um, come into the asset details uh, in the LOD zero, LOD info, and make sure it's uh, allo CPU access is checked. This one right here is pretty important. Then come all the way down to mesh sampling type uh, this is the default value, skeleton bones. I'm not having a lot of uh, triangles on my mesh. As you can see, it's just some hands and <laughs> these things. It's, it's the default uh, metahuman mesh. But 
if I go ahead and um, use, for example, this one right here, it's going to be having a lot of triangles in it, which is nice. But not in my case. I don't have any triangles, so I can only use um, bones. Um, in the particle update, we can use a noise, curl noise force, and we can use a um, strength of 150 and a frequency of 150. And then we need a gravity, gravity force. Uh, it's not a gravity, it's just a um, force we're using. It's just called gravity. Um, Click on this one, type in random range, we uh, random range vector, and then the minimum value is 0, 0, 10, maximum is uh, 1, 200, and 100. It, um, makes the people feel like there is kind of a wind in the scene, as you can see here. If I die this moment, uh, then my character gets hit and just hit me. It just goes away in a really cool way. As if there's a wind somewhere in the scene. <clears throat> um, and then this one should be available when you add gravity and force. If not, there um, should be some notification here. Just uh, select fix issue and it will add this one for you. Sprite render, I didn't change anything. You can go ahead and change the alignment to face camera. Um, to, pardon me, facing mode to face camera, but it's already set on automatic, so it really doesn't matter. And how can we play this animation since it's just a burst and uh, it's going to be all, uh, looped only once? Uh, we have to kind of activate it. So we can either spawn it in the scene or just have it. Just drag it actually. Um, we can find it in the content browser, drag it in here under probably our mesh. I've already done it. I don't want to do anything with it. Um, it's here. It's right here. Um, auto activate is um, active by default. It's a child of my mesh component. So it uh, wherever my mesh goes, uh, even if Ragdoll is enabled wherever my mesh goes, the particle goes with it. Okay, this one right here. So we can just drag it in our um, in our event graph and type in activate. Activate. And that's pretty much it. It will just activate it once. Um, it will make sure that the effect is being spawned in the scene and it's just wonderful. It looks really cool, gorgeous. I like it and um, that's it. I hope this was helpful. It's just, the guy's just killing me. This... Huh. That was one of my powers, okay. Um, I wish you a great day, bye.